Unfortunately, I've fallen in love with this, some late round uh, offensive linemen over the last couple of years, whether it be Drew Samia, whether it be Ole Udo. Uh, I've just put on the table that, hey, if these guys just get a chance, maybe they'll become the next Joe Berger. Maybe they'll become uh, the next John Sullivan. Nope. Not, not so much with Samia and definitely not so much with Ole Udo, where I had a lot of faith in the 2019 sixth round pick out of Elan University. He was a small school right tackle. Just give him some time to acclimate to the NFL game. Uh, and they gave him two years, 2019-2020 uh, as a backup. And then 2021 slotted in as starting right guard for your Minnesota Fighting Vikings. And then... Yikes, 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 yikes. It, it was extremely ungood. And just to just to visualize how ungood his season was. So Udo started 14 games of right guard and two at left tackle for the uh, for the Vikings. And out of 56 qualifying guards, he, here's where he ranked. Uh, pressure is 45. He's 52nd in the NFL. Uh, pressure rate. Uh, so the, the rate at which you allow pressure is 3.7%, which is tied for 47th worst in the league. Uh, only allowed one sack. And for that, we thank you. 16 penalties was second most in the league uh, for guards, as well as PFF pass blocking grade of 39.0, was ranked 52nd out of 56 qualifying guards. So it was just massively frustrating. And, and like we said, even though he didn't give up uh, a ton of sacks, or at least was, wasn't was uh, attributed with uh, that many sacks, it just seemed like whenever there was a big play penalty, holding 74, walking on back, or some quick pressure right in Kirk Cousins' grill. Because, I mean, uh, Garrett Bradbury gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of scorn from Vikings fans for giving up that quick interior pressure. But Ole Udo was, was just as guilty of it last year, too. And it, it just his, his size, it just didn't translate. And even though he does play with a nasty streak, you could see that sometimes uh, when things started going bad, it, it just sort of snowballed and just was not, not great at, at all. But then... You get to uh, this year. So, Ole Udo, he's certainly not guaranteed a starting spot in this offensive line. New regime, new offensive line coach, a lot of infusion in terms of free agency and in the draft. You're adding Jesse Davis as well as Chris Reed. You drafted at Ingram. Why Davis will act, maybe actually will get a look in year two. Uh, but ESPN NFL Nation, the writers got together and put out a uh, NFL players on the roster bubble entering 2022 training camps. 32 cut candidates from veterans to former first rounders. And for the Vikings, Kevin Seifert, who is definitely not Carl. Gerbschmidt again definitely not Carl Gerbschmidt Kevin Seifert he is not he's not Carl Gerbschmidt Hmm. He listed uh, Ole Udo. Uh, this is what he wrote. Uh, Udo started 16 games in 2021, but he tied for the NFL lead in penalties, and it appears the Vikings' new coaching staff is looking to replace him. Newcomer Jesse Davis got most of the reps at right guard during minicamp, and the team also used second-round pi- uh, second pick on guard Ed Ingram. And you look at the Vikings' Offensive line depth. So, yes, Jesse Davis is getting a lot of run there. Chris Reed also got a, a good look. See, also he's getting some snaps as the backup center just in case. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Ole Udo hasn't even cracked a run with the ones. Why Davis uh, maybe is going to get a chance. I mean, Ole Udo maybe... Maybe his best chance is to hold on as a backup right tackle, except I do think that Blake Brandle uh, is going to win the backup swing tackle job that was formerly held by Rashad Hill. Uh, and then you have, do have Ed Ingram as a second-round pick. And I, I think as you get to training camp and the rookies start getting the time of day, I think that Ole Udo could be a one, one of the first cuts uh, out of the gate because, uh, like we said, just because he was starter last year, he performed poorly, new regime coming in, new offensive line coach, new GM, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. They don't have any ties. They have zero ties to him at all. And all they see is some really bad tape that he put up last year. So this really may be it. So I, I, I agree with ESPN on this one. I think that uh, Ole is, is clearly on the roster bubble, and I think that – I. I, I don't think that he's going to be making the roster. I, I don't think that he's going to roster. I don't think that he's going to make the practice squad. It is what it is. And like, like we said, we just want guys to get a chance. But once they've shown that they can't do it, get them out of there, right? And just because we uh, had some faith in Ole Udo as a six-round pick in 2019 doesn't mean that you could you should keep sticking your finger into the light socket. Once he got zapped a couple times, like, oh, you should probably stop doing that. Right, so again, I don't think Ole Udo made the team, uh, makes the team or the practice squad. I think ESPN got it right in this spot. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. ESPN's Kevin Seifert, who is not Carl Gerbschmidt, uh, he uh, projects uh, Ole Udo as a veteran cap uh, cut candidate. Nailed it. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts and their thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes most worth the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.